No, not playing. Mike, what do you like about Williams' maturation as a pro three years here now in terms of the move to the middle and, and given how well he's played of late? Right, you know, I think it's a tough question just because he wasn't here for the year. And so uh, that makes it harder for him, no question. I think he, uh, Willie's a real strong guy, got real good edges. Uh, I don't think you, you saw any of that early. And you're starting to see it now. He has the puck more. He, he was an elite cycle guy for us. Yeah, you know, still the edges and the strength in the battles is just coming back now. And then the other thing, he's got an absolute bomb of a shot. And so he's got to feel that too. But those are all things that just happen over time. Just do good things, good things will happen. Just keep working hard. Mike, how many times in your career has a player come in late to a team, like a trade deadline kind of situation, and impacted your team for the rest of that year? Why? Well, I, I think that's an unfair statement, the second part, but a good way to set that up. Um, here, here's the question. Has a guy come in late and affected his season? No question about it. I think it happens all the time in the National Hockey League. It makes it tough. I think the more veteran, established player you are, uh, I don't think it's as big a deal. I think when you're a younger guy and you also go from your first deal to your second deal, and that puts a bigger light on you as well, I think it makes it harder for sure. Looking in terms of, of players who have changed your teams in any way from trade deadline on, well, I'm probably going to miss this now. Uh, a couple of years ago here. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of people that came in and made a major impact. Uh, I think when we got Stewart from LA and Detroit to give us a top four, it was uh, second to none. I mean, there's probably been a bunch of guys that I haven't thought about right now. But uh, I think, to be honest with you, I think Muzzin's changed our team. I think, uh, you know, he's got to get it get his wife here and get everything organized and all that. But I think he's really changed our team already just because we can have six people on the ice uh, at any time on the back and feel real good. How do you feel he might fit in with Travis? Yeah, you know, you ask me a different guy each time I come in here. That'll continue to happen until we get it sorted out. So to me, it's more about just getting the players on the ice. We thought uh, guards and Z were really good last game, uh, probably as good as guards been in a while. And, and I thought Z was, uh, if you go through the whole trip, was fantastic on the trip. So uh, when you go through it, that was probably our best set last game. So that's why things changed. But, uh, you know, there's six of them. Do you expect much of an uh, adjustment for William Mike, given the way that he thinks the game so well? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's got to, the problem with playing in the middle, you got to play 200 feet. You got to play without the puck. So that's why it's way easier to be a winger. That's why when you come to the National Hockey League, they stick you on the wall for a couple of years. You learn how to play a little bit, and then they gradually play in the middle. It's way harder to play in the middle. Like, how many guys can do what Matty's been able to do? Step right in and play down the pipe. You were saying this is just now the legs finally feel back to where they have. Been. Well, I think that's what I was talking about is his strength in battles and stuff like that. It, it, it looks to me he has the puck. And when he's playing well, he has the puck and he's transporting it, but he's also heavy on it and he shoots it. So, uh, you know, that's all part of what we were talking about. How might his skill set translate to the middle on the power play? Well, you know, we're just trying because obviously you know, we've moved guys around there. We've had different guys on that. We need the group now. We didn't get any power plays last game. I mean, two, uh, two games ago wasn't as good. Two previous games, it was great. So we'll just keep plugging away and see what happens. But I don't, I don't know if you remember the Worlds when Willie was the MVP. He played in the middle the whole time and it was outstanding. Even today, he just tipped the puck. He's got good hand-eye and gives us a different look in the middle. Well, there's a guy like Outlook Cater that you had in Detroit or Hyman they have here. There seems to be that combination of two skilled guys and like a Tom Wilson on, as the third component. Now, how important is that in terms of that chemistry? Well, you know, there's a couple things. Number one, uh, Pavel used to tell me he didn't want two other guys on the line who wanted the puck. He just wanted someone to get him the puck. He wanted the puck all the time. So that's what those guys do. They get it for you, they get it back, and they, they go to the net. And right away, when you go to the net, you tie up 1D or he ties you up and now there's one less person and no one's close to you. Good players don't want people close to them. They want space. That's why that works. Now, I mean, Himes is elite, elite, elite four checker, elite skater, and leads to possession. Whether you lose the face off or win the face off, you end up having the puck, you know? So I think he's a different sort. Does it matter if he gets that physicality that a guy like Tom Wilson has? Well, he game? is, but he is physical. He's physical on offense. He gets the puck back all the time. I don't think there's one guy in the league that gets the puck back more than him. Now, does he scare you like Tom Wilson? I don't think so, but he comes to get you, gets the puck.